Psalms chapter 23, very familiar scripture to all of us. Probably a lot of us can recite it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes, yes. Amen. Psalms chapter 20 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Say, Lord, let the King hear us when we call. Glory. Tonight, the message that God has given me to bring to you it stems from an experience that I had years ago. I was a very young mother. I was having a lot of medical problems at the time, and I had a lady to come and visit me. And she she didn't know me. She knew nothing about me. She came with my husband's aunt, which was not a talker, not somebody that would have told her all my stuff before she got there. She prayed about stuff, Sister Faye. And she was faithful. But she come and she said, I want to come to your house. And I said, okay. And she said, I want to bring Sister So-and-So with me. I said, okay. Of course, I know I'm not saying no. You know, not, but I was a little apprehensive. I was a young mother, and I probably, I was busy. And I probably wasn't as close to God as I needed to be at that time. But she came to me, and she prayed when she come, and she had some personal things to say to me. But then, this is what she said. What is in you is pure. You love God. And she said, you want to serve God. And you want to raise your children to serve God. But you're only half full. Wow. Come on, amen. <laughs> and I looked at her, and I began to weep. Because I thought, nobody noticed that. You know, I just sort of slid on in on Sunday night. Slid on in on... Sunday morning with a carry-all and a blanket and a diaper bag and, and Sister Sonia, I didn't realize I was on the half full. The enemy put this spirit of business and being a new mother and wanting to be mama of the year, do everything right. He put that, the enemy took that and he hid what I really needed to know. And I had prayed and sought God enough beforehand that he cared enough to send a stranger mm -hmm. to my house. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I begin to think, I've got to get full. <clears throat> Greta's depending on me. My home depends on me. My husband depends on me. He wasn't serving the Lord at that time. But then I begin to seek the Lord. And I could take you to the place and the time where my duty became my desire. Amen. I didn't go to church out of duty anymore. I didn't sing in the choir out of duty anymore. Oh. I didn't go to the lady functions out of duty. Oh. I didn't have the yes. out of duty. I wanted to be there. Okay. I wanted to be fully committed to God. It was the full desire of my heart. It was not something that was halfway done. It was not something I wanted to be lacking in. 
I remember my little mama. She said to me, she said, oh, Sissy, I had a vision when you was just a child. I said, Mama, you've never told me about that. She said, well, I wasn't supposed to until it was time. And it's time now. And she said, you're going to carry God's word. I said, oh. <laughs> okay, Mom. You know, I, I was close. She said, no, you don't understand. She said, I seen it. I seen you. And she said, you didn't look like you look now. And I said, was I younger? I was, you know. She said, no, you were older. I said, okay. She said, we're going to pray. And I'm going to pray for you that you be acceptable to God's will in your life. I never would have thought that took me from my comfort zone, from what I knew to be my home all of my life, to pack up with $3,000 in the bank of savings. Joe had four milk companies to shut down. Everywhere we went, they preached move, 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 move. And it was all in different parts of the state of Tennessee mm. within a month span. Mm. He'd come in. He said we're, he went to be the pastor at Mendel. He said, we're moving to Mount Mendel. I said, we are. He said, yeah, the truck will be here Monday. He said, take the dishes out and, and what you don't want broke and take the closet shut. I said, Okay. So I did exactly what he told me we moved. But to make a long story short, God really blessed us, and that was a teaching ground for us. And then we came to Tahoma in 1997, and that's where we are now. And he and I pastored the church along side by side. But had I not been obedient to those ladies, yes. They spoke that word to me. Mm -hmm. Never take a word that comes to you in a setting or somebody that comes to you. Don't take that lightly because God appointed that yeah, person. Right. Yeah. 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 He don't want you to be lacking. He don't want me to be lacking. He is there with a supply of that living water. Amen. But tonight, this is my best child. I thought, Lord, please don't let get broke. <laughs> I wrapped it up in my son's shirt. <laughs> but he wants you to be filled. But he wants you to be running up the road. Oh, Lord, hey, hallelujah. You're not here by chance. That's right. You're here because God intended you to be here. That's right. But yeah. He wants you drinking from the salsa. Come on. He don't want you. He wants you so overflowing in Him that He's got you drinking from the salsa. When I was a little tight, my granny would let me drink coffee from the salsa. Just a little bit before my mama did before my mama said me. And, and I thought that was the coolest thing because that was a big kid drink. But I remember... That saucer was so precious to me. And I thought, Lord, there's people that need to drink from you, sister. There's people that need to drink from you. They need to take from us. So it's our responsibility to stay full and overflowing. Yes, yes. Where yes. we can help others. Yes, yes. Yes. I know a young man. We've helped drying out three times. Literally. We have detoxed him in our home. And I don't say that to pin no roses on me. I love him dearly and I'll do it again. But he, we had a cheat revival last week. A, a lady, Sister Latoya and Sister Keita and I, and Sister Tammy from our church, we ministered. And it brought back so many wonderful memories. It just flooded me with memories. And I thought, God, how great you are that you would let me be able to do this. He'd been missing for days. He showed back up. And he came to the altar that night before he was leaving the next morning for 90 days. 
and treatments in it. And he said, oh, my. I knelt down at that altar there in the grass, and I felt him just pulling every bit of me he could pull to get what he needed to have the strength mm -hmm. and from the Lord. And I said that to say this. What if I hadn't had the tent revival, Sister Kita? What if we hadn't have, I'll pray about that, and what if I hadn't have been filled up and overflowing? It would have been real easy for me to say, we have done this three times. Mm -hmm. But no. And I felt it. I felt like, it was almost like I was feeling my body dehydrating. Now, and that may seem strange to you, but that's how I felt. But I know God's going to touch you. Yeah. And I know He's going to help you. But you have to be obedient and do the things God instructs you to do. Yes. Where you are where you need to be and where you can speak the word and where you can be there for the shoulder to cry on or you can write that letter of anointing or you can call that phone right. or you can fast that morning for them. You have got to be able to do that if you want to continue in God's work and be pleasing to Him. Jesus. 
Thank God it worked. That nine months that I did that, it birthed Amen. something within me. Amen. That nine months, it was not coincidental that I did it for nine months because it birthed something in me. But when I would leave there, I would be so drained. My little daughter-in-law or my friend that I had went with, one of them would drive. And she'd stop up there at the BP and get me some Gatorade. And then I'd begin to feel better. But it was like wringing out a sponge. Mm -hmm. And they want just a drop. Just a morsel of hope. Mm -hmm. Just something to hang on to. Just, just a little bit. Oh yeah, someone was there to get points. Oh yeah, someone was there just because they wouldn't be the other spot. But some of them was there, and two of them have come to my church. Glory to God. But all they wanted was just, just a little bit of hope. That little water that would give them hope again. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. God has anointed you for such a time as this. Amen. Amen. Amen.